Hey guys, it's Jasmine. Today I'll be talking about my favorite art supplies currently. I took notes to remember what to say. So first of all, I want to mention that I am a sophomore painting major and I am attending Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. So as a painting major, obviously I have to take studio classes and I'm taking two right now, painting and printmaking, relief to be exact. So for this video, I'm gonna go in sections. I also want to mention that I am sharing with you guys my current favorite or supplies it's bound to change like anytime even in like a few weeks but this is just what i really like to use as of now since i've been doing art for a really long time i've also experimented and used a lot of different other types of mediums for example charcoal uh pastels watercolor i won't be talking about that in this video just because i don't really use it as of now let's talk about printmaking for printmaking i am taking the class called relief and for relief it means that you are carving into something and that includes lino cut woodcuts and letterpress but I haven't really done any letterpress I've just been mainly working with wood and within printmaking there's a lot of different types so like I mentioned relief there's also like intaglio which is like etching on copper plates dry point engraving there's also planographic printmaking which includes like lithography and monotypes and there's stenciling which includes like silk screen and others but like I mentioned before I mainly work with wood sometimes lino so let's talk about tools these are the tools that my professor suggested to me and they're, I don't even know how to pronounce this. They're Mikiso power grip tools and they're made in Japan. This is what they look like. There's a set of five that I bought and there's also a set of seven, I believe, or you can buy them single. So these four are my favorite tools because I really enjoy carving really tiny details as you guys could see. I invested in a really, really tiny U-shaped one. I say invested, but this was like $15, which is like the, the least amount I've spent on art supplies. And this one I bought single online. This carving tool is shaped like a U, so it's called a U-gauge. And there's also a V-shaped one. The V-shaped one is also really good for details, but I've found it to be a little bit hard to control. But yeah, these are tools that I use. I think that they're really nice. Um, when I went to Japan, I saw a lot of these tools in an art store and I was like, oh, I don't think I'm taking printmaking next semester, so I'm not gonna buy some, which I regret. So moving on from that, since you are using sharp blades to carve your wood or lino, obviously you're gonna have to sharpen it with something. This is the sharpening kit that I use. So for this sharpening kit, you can buy it for $16 on Amazon and it's gonna last you for a long time. I think my professor said like two years or something, but it's called the Flex Cut Slip Stroke. Well, it's really crusty because I've been using it for a while, but this is all you need to sharpen your tools. Okay, I'm just gonna go over this really quick. So you have this block, this is the most important part, and there's leather on the back, which you rub really hard until there's a thick coat, and then you just slide your blades on both sides because there's two sides to this blade, and then you just slide it like 12 times each on each side, and then it should last you for a while. And the back of this is just to get the crusty shit off of it. I suggest to sharpen it every like... 45 minutes or so because then you can feel the knife is going in slower and a bit more wobbly That's just what I feel like when my tools start to dull so for wood, what do I like to use? I try to go for soft wood. So sheen apply or MDF Sheen apply when you carve into it. It is really really buttery It literally feels like you're carving through butter and an MDF is not pure wood MDF is composed of different types of wood. It feels very soft. It's not buttery But it's like very soft very smooth to carve into my professor also had us try other types of wood like birch ply which is a little bitch to work with just because when you carve into like plywood if you go against the grain of the wood so the wood goes like that right and if you carve this way the grain literally breaks and then your design is just like so in the future i'm gonna stick to like sheen apply or mdf just because they're soft and easier to carve in i also forgot to mention but it's good to shellac mdf before you carve onto it and what shellacking is it's like a wood finish basically and it provides you with a protective barrier to carve on this is just my process but with whatever wood that you're working with i usually like to tint it first because i draw my designs directly onto the wood some people transfer it but i just like drawing directly onto the wood because it lessens time and energy and that's very important to me but yeah when i stain the wood i mix a bit of gamsol and a bit of relief ink like i don't know whatever color i see first pink blue and i use a rag and i just rub it onto the wood it dries quite fast 
in like an hour or so and then you can just draw directly onto it so for drawing onto it i just use whatever black marker i see and then just draw what i want the design to look like when it's printed and just carve out the negative part basically relief is a step and since I've probably spent over like 200 hours on carving, it's pretty easy for me to imagine what the image will look like when it's printed. So all this wood that I talked about, you can buy from Home Depot or any hardware store. It's literally like $4 for a two feet by two feet piece. To actually print your block, my school's studio has a printing press, but you can also hand print it. And that's the most tiring process. It took me like 30 minutes to print one block one time. Arm and wrist workout, let me tell you. <laughs> but to hand print it, all you need is your paper and a wooden spoon. So you place the block first on a flat surface and you place the paper on it and then you take the spoon and you rub it until you see the design. For paper, normally I like to use Stonehenge White because it's very heavy duty. It does take more effort to get your block printed onto Stonehenge White. Another type of paper that I really like to use is rice paper. And when I buy it, it comes in rolls, which really annoys me because it like curves up. But yeah, rice paper is very thin, very easy to get ink on, and it looks very delicate when you're done printing with it. It. Those are all the tools that I use for printmaking and now I'm gonna move on to painting which is my major but I feel like I spent more time printing. So now I'm gonna talk about my two favorite painting mediums which are acrylic gouache and oil paints. So what is acrylic gouache? Acrylic gouache is what I see as an in-between acrylic and gouache. Acrylic is a very fast drying medium. I don't like it because it dries so fast and like before I even get to the next part, it's like almost done drying and I'm like, hello? It dries kind of shiny, which I don't like it and you can't work back into it. Gouache on the other hand, it dries very matte. You can still work back into it. It's like watercolor, but creamy version. That's how I see it. So acrylic gouache in between, not as fast drying as acrylic, but it dries fast, but I really like it because it dries matte and I like matte. Acrylic gouache, you can't really work back into it because it just causes the paint to look a little bit speckly. But still, I really like this medium and that's why I've been working a lot with it lately. The brand of acrylic gouache that I really like to use is called Holbin and that is a Japanese brand. This one small tube of paint in the US is around seven to like $15 depending on the range. Depending on the pigment it is, it might be harder to make the pigment, which is why it becomes more expensive. Because I went to Japan during winter, they were so much cheaper in Tokyo than in comparison to like Blitz. So I bought a whole case of it. They're literally like half of the price in Japan. That was a really big investment, but one of my professors once said, you only cry once when you buy something expensive and you don't have to buy more of it again. So my favorite colors for acrylic gouache, just to give you guys like a kind of brief description, I really like pastels and neon colors. I'm in my pastel phase right now. So for my color palette, these are some of the colors I love. Just to name off some, this is just called pink. Luminous red, this is a neon color. Naples yellow. Ice green, I love this color. It's like a pastel mint. For purples, I love lilac. Lilac or lilac? Pale lime. Such creative names, pale pink. And I also really like this green, ash green. But yeah, these are just some of my favorite colors. I also think white is a very important color when using acrylic gouache. This is just regular gouache, never mind, but I, I just use it with my acrylic gouache. I bought this senior year of high school and I am still using it. For acrylic gouache, just because the price level is pretty expensive for such a small tube of paint, I normally want to paint smaller, but I'll also probably try bigger pieces with acrylic gouache. It's just when I paint on bigger pieces of paper and I see how much paint I'm using from that tiny tube, I'm like, ah. So for the brushes that I use with acrylic gouache or like other mediums like gouache, watercolor, I use a lot of brushes. This is everything that I've collected from the past three years. I do a decent job at taking care of these brushes, but I fucking suck at taking care of oil painting brushes. I also keep these in a ColourPop brush. Um, what are these called? But out of these brushes, these two brands are my favorite. A lot of you guys ask where my metal brush is from, and this is by Hua Hong. It is a Korean brand, and I bought it in China. I don't think you guys can find these online. I tried to look for it, but these are so good for when working with wet mediums. Fibers are synthetic, I believe. Oh, 
Also, this is very travel friendly. You can do this. Except one time when I did this, I fucked up the bristles. I've been using this for around two years already and they're still going okay. And my other favorite brush brand is by Princeton and it's the blue handle one. You can buy this in most art stores in the US, I believe. This is a level two brush and it's for mixed media. So I use this for wet mediums and oil mediums, but I separate them. I like to buy these oval shaped brushes in different sizes. I have this one in a size 10 and I also have a size 2 and I also like to use these round kind of pointy ones. This is a size 3 for smaller details. So now I'm going to talk about paper. I've experimented with a lot of different flat surfaces for acrylic gouache and I have to say that I only like to use hot pressed watercolor paper and the brand I use is called Arches but I think any other type of heavy duty hot pressed watercolor paper is good. So hot pressed Spark color paper is when the paper is very smooth and cold pressed is where you can feel the paper texture and I just like the smooth texture of the hot pressed paper a lot more. I've also used acrylic gouache on canvas which is fine for me like I don't love it but I don't hate it either but I tried painting on panel one time and I hated it. I just didn't like the texture of it. It was like way too smooth. Maybe in the future I'll experiment with like other types of paper surfaces but right now I just really like to use hot pressed watercolor paper. So yeah that is all I have to say about this medium. Okay, so let's talk about oil paints. The three main brands that I love are Gamblin, Windsor & Newton, and Utrecht. So honestly, when I bought my paints, I really didn't care about the brand because they're all really good. I just bought whatever color that I liked that I saw. So for my own color collection, I use about 19 oil paints, which I will list them off for you. I'm going to list off my favorite pastel colors. I love using pastels, like skin tints and like basically everything. The pastel colors that I use are produced by Gamblin. They are modern colors. So Naples Yellow, Radiant Violet, Radiant Blue, Radiant Green, uh, Radiant Turquoise, and Radiant Red, which is a pastel pink. And then the other oil paints that I use include Titanium White, which is very important. Most people suggest you to buy a big tube of it because you're going to use it a lot, which is what I have. I have a huge tube of Cadmium Red Medium. I actually fucked up buying this huge tube of Cadmium Red Medium because recently I learned that there is a difference between Cadmium Red and like cadmium red medium. I bought the medium one because it was cheaper, but turns out if you buy any tube of paint that ends with the word medium, it loses its intensity and it kind of grays down when you mix it with like a white. And also if you were to mix cadmium red with white, it would be much easier to mix in comparison to cadmium red medium with white. That's why my professors suggest to just buy the expensive one over the cheap one because the color will turn out much better. Again, another fuck up, cadmium yellow medium. I also have a huge tube of cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. So what I just talked about, the red, yellow, and blue, they are the primary colors. If you have warm and cold versions of each primary color for oil painting, that's enough. You can mix any color with the primary colors and it saves you money. But I also have other colors in smaller tubes. Prussian blue. I really love this blue because it's kind of cool and it has a kind of green tint to it. I use this a lot in replacement to black. My black tube is completely crusty. I also have a Mars black, but I mostly use Prussian blue to darken the tonal value of my colors. Sometimes if I want a darker color, I also mix black with Prussian blue. And because I love using green within my paintings, I also have a cobalt green pure and a cadmium green. I don't know why I have three different types of browns. There really was not any need for three different types of browns, but I have a burnt sienna, a burnt umber, and a raw umber. I don't really use these. I don't even know why I bought these. And then another very important color is a violet, the cobalt violet hue by Winsor & Newton. So now that I've talked about the colors that I use, I'm going to move on to mediums. The three main mediums that I use are walnut oil, gamsol, and laqueen. I've been experimenting with oil paints since ninth grade, so this is what I've come to love. I'll talk about each one of these a little bit. So gamsol, I use this as a paint thinner and to clean my brushes. It is 100% pure odorless mineral spirit. It doesn't smell that bad. And this laqueen is by Winsor & Newton and I really like to use it because it speeds up the drying process. It just reminds me of jello. It gives the paint like a jello-y kind of slightly 
opaque feeling and it just goes on very smoothly but if you want to go on even more smoother i like to use walnut oil this one is by m graham walnut oil is pretty fast drying and it doesn't turn yellow over the years actually i wouldn't know because my, my paintings haven't gone more than a year very smooth sometimes honestly i would mix that much oil medium with my oil paints just because sometimes i like it thick but when i want it to be smooth and thin i use like walnut oil for other oil mediums the more yellow the oil is the more faster it'll dry you can also make your own oil paint with pigment but it's just very time consuming a very big arm workout but i will probably do that in the future if i want to paint bigger pieces so now i'm gonna move on to talking about surfaces for oil painting my favorite surface is painting on wood honestly you're supposed to prime the wood first with like gesso or stuff but i like seeing the wood show through the paint which is why when i paint on wood normally i paint very thinly and I also just like the way the paint and the wood I just like the texture of the wood. Painting in general is a very expensive major. To buy pre-made wood canvases is pretty expensive. Later in the year, I'm gonna learn how to make my own wood canvases and save money. So I'm really excited for that. But another surface that I enjoy working on are canvases. I'm very particular about my surfaces. For canvas, I really hate it when the freaking canvas texture dots show through the paint. I can handle that as long as I gesso the canvas properly. And I've also tried working on smooth gessoed panels, which I do not like the texture of because it is way too smooth. And I've also tried it on paper, which I don't really enjoy. Honestly, I could go into a history of paint and gesso, but I don't want to make this video long, so I'm just gonna cut it down. For gesso, a lot of people like to use white gesso, but I prefer to have a tinted surface. So when I do gesso my canvases, I mix a bit of blue pigment with white gesso and I just slather it onto the canvas. So like I mentioned before, I am very bad taking care of my brushes. Um, This is a new year's resolution that I plan to work on. Look at this motherfucker. My favorite brushes for oil painting are the blue handled ones. These two are new brushes because I ruined so many. But yeah, this is the Princeton mixed media brushes. I also like to use natural fibers. Don't know where they are. A lot of painters that work with oil medium really like to work with rough very natural brushes which i don't particularly enjoy because as of now i don't like it when my oil paintings look very thick and brush strokey i like the smooth look with a little bit of texture and that is it for oils and now i'm gonna move on to two miscellaneous items so when i design tattoos or when i do digital art i like to use my ipad so it's the ipad pro 11 inch there's also a 12.9 inch but that one is really heavy and really annoying to carry around and i also got this in the smallest capacity available this is the 64 gigabyte ipad just because i don't find a use to spending more money for a larger capacity when i just use it to draw <laughs> My drawing app, the app that I use is called Procreate and it is $10. I've been using Procreate for years now. This is what I use to work on like my YouTube thumbnails or my tattoo designs. These are my tattoo designs. So I'm trying to make prints of this piece that I did last semester. Any white spots that I see, I just color it in with black. And then I also use it to take notes. Despite me saying that I hate this class, it is very helpful actually. A lot of you guys also asked what brushes I use in Procreate and my main brush is the HB pencil brush and that's basically all I use. My iPad cover is from Amazon. This is a lavender shade and I decorated it with stickers. I'm gonna talk about my sketchbook slash planner. So this is my planner slash sketchbook slash place where I take notes in when I feel like taking notes which is not usual. This is the Hobonichi Techno 2020 Cousin Planner and it goes from month to week to daily and since I don't use the daily section of this planner I just doodle in it when I am bored. These are my notes for what to talk about in this video, but I'm gonna sketchbook in it more. I don't really have a lot of time this semester for the weekly planning section. This is my seventh week using it and I'm very proud. The monthly one, I don't really touch either. I just use it for like long-term stuff because I normally only use the weekly section. A brief history on my planner and bullet journal attempts. I failed. 
like 15 times this is my last attempt and so far it's working just because i think it's because i'm so busy this semester and i need to plan out what i have to do i think in the past it really stressed me out to make my planner look pretty and my sketchbook to look pretty but now i can give less than two fucks as to how it looks normally it turns out better when i go unplanned than planned with the decorating i got really into stickers the past few weeks so i got a lot in japan and i also got a lot on etsy but yeah that's just how i've been using this planner as a sketchbook and a weekly planner because the hobo nietzsche is very time regulated i don't really use it like if i go past like half an hour or whatever it's fine when i plan out my weeks it's just to see what i have to do throughout the week and sometimes i just switch around things and yeah when I bought this in Japan, all my friends were like, Are you ever gonna use it? Haven't you tried like 20 times? Even me, when I bought it, I was like, This is probably gonna be a waste of like my $30. But proved myself wrong. It's been very useful. So yeah, this is the end of the video. I talked about my favorite supplies. I know I didn't talk about other mediums. If you guys have any questions about them, please comment down below and I will try to help. Because while I do have knowledge in these other mediums, I just don't use it as much. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that it was helpful. If you guys have any other questions, also comment them down below and I will see you guys very soon. Bye!